Hi, I'm Dr. Narda Robinson, Educational Architect for Medical Acupuncture for Veterinarians. This is Myth Busting the Triple Heater, Five Facts to Know and Tell. Our objectives are to examine five myths surrounding the triple heater. We're going to sort fact from fiction concerning this commonly misunderstood entity. Other words for triple heater that have been used include triple energizer, triple warmer, three heaters, or the san jiao. The three heaters is a metaphor for bodily processes. Chinese medicine relies heavily on metaphors, and the metaphors they chose reflected their day-to-day -day existence. The triple heater metaphor alludes to the way food was and still often is prepared. So it gets back to food steamers. Originally they were made from bamboo, but nowadays we have these metal items. They would be stacked upon one another to allow steam to permeate the contents traveling through these holes in the bottoms. And that way, all different types of food could be cooked simultaneously from one heat source. The triple heater in the body alludes to the membranous linings of the three truncal body cavities. It's fluid, not energy, that circulates within this lining system. So we he see here an acupuncture mannequin. And this is the trunk, and these lines divide the trunk into essentially those three heaters. It's the upper thorax and all that contents until the diaphragm, and then between the diaphragm and essentially the navel, so that's the abdomen, and then the pelvis. So thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. The concept of the three bodily cavities where an energy or fluid intermingle is a holdover from this cooking metaphor. And in this three-chambered steamer, this is where, in reality, fluid and steam do migrate. Now, in the body, it's that diaphragm, again, that separates the thoracic from the abdominal cavity, so we don't have those holes between those two areas. If this division would break down in the body, then we would have pathological states. So what are these linings doing? Well, in that upper heater, or in that thoracic cavity, we have the pleura. It's actually two cavities that surround each lung, and that it's separated by the mediastinum. Then the, the pleura will be further divided into a costal pleura near the ribs, the diaphragmatic pleura near the diaphragm, and then that mediastinal pleura. What about the mediastinum? Well, that contains the pericardial cavity, and we'll talk about this later. The peritoneum, on the other hand, is found within the abdominal and pelvic cavities. What do these membranes do? Well, they provide this anti-stick surfaces for the organs that are adjacent to each other. So it's this lubricant between the two surfaces, the visceral surface next to the organ and the parietal surface on the outer side. And then that allows the organs to function really independently, and that way the heart can contract, the lungs can expand, the digesta can be propelled through the intestines, and the urinary bladder can fill and then empty. So in Chinese medicine, we think of this breakdown between these entities as the triple heater, which includes that pleura and peritoneal lining system, and then the pericardium there within the mediastinum. But if we look at it from the cavity's perspective, we see that the pleura and pericardium is in the thorax, and the peritoneum is in the abdomen and also the pelvis. So let's start with the lower heater. Here we have here this pelvic basin or the lower heater. In cooking, it would contain water. And initially that would be clear, and then as the water is producing steam and the food contents are beginning to cook, then we're going to have a turbidity result. Debris from the food and other juices may collect in the basin, and then this could be discarded as waste. In the body, this bottom heater contains the urinary and lower digestive tract organs. When we have disorders there, that could include urinary tract infection and diarrhea. So this is that lower heater representing that pelvic basin. When we get to the middle heater, 
that's going to have its contents exposed to this bidirectional steam system and then the descending fluids that are dripping down from the upper heater. In Chinese medicine, they considered the spleen, stomach, gallbladder, and liver as the organs within that middle heater, which is actually that cranial abdomen. And when we have those organs in the body and we have food inside the digestive tract, then usually we want that to descend, but occasionally that could, the contents could ascend as in reflux, regurgitation, or vomiting. And that is metaphorically represented in this triple heater where we have that bidirectional flow of fluids, steam rising and water descending. Now, then we have the upper heater, which in the body has, metaphorically contains that heart, lung, and pericardium system. And then we have the lung, which has been considered the lid of the organs, as shown here. Then in Chinese medicine, they also talk about qi. Some people think of that as invisible energy. But probably in ancient times, the Chinese were referring to the way that the steam would circulate within these three cavities of the cooking utensil. They would say things like in the upper heater, the qi from the lungs would descend down to the kidneys and bladder, much like the fluid from the lid is going to drip down into that pelvic basin. We know that in reality that that does not happen, but these are pre-scientific metaphors. Then as we talked about, that middle heater, which represents the abdomen, could send pure qi upward to the lungs and heart, and then that impure qi down to the bladder for elimination. Again, these things don't really occur, but some within Chinese medicine believe they still do. Now in the lower heater, that's just that collection system for the waste that will ultimately be thrown away. So when we get to those five myths, let's examine those ideas more closely. So fact or fiction, the triple heater is a functional energy system that regulates organs in the thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. These are things that you hear abundantly throughout Chinese medicine courses. That's fiction. The triple heater represents that inner lining system that we just talked about. Let's think about embryogenesis as far as how this serous membrane system develops. So what the Chinese originally were referring to was this serous membrane system, and then over time, actually in the 1900s, it got transformed into this energy concept. So even the ancient Chinese knew better than to call it mystical energy. So how does this come about? Think about a water balloon. As the embryo develops, the, the tissue that will eventually become an organ is going to migrate into this inner lining system and eventually will be surrounded by it. So in the adult, as we can see here, we have the lungs, but if we look there on the side, we see that bilayer of the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. So the visceral pleura is against the lung, and then that parietal, or in this case, costal pleura is against the rib cage. And that's going to be filled with fluid, not energy. So here's another, let's see, is it fact or fiction? The triple heater is responsible for producing and circulating nourishing and protective energy. Again, we just said that no, that it's really the fluid. And ultimately, that fluid will be reabsorbed by the lymphatic system. Here's another one. The triple heater is responsible for the movement and transformation of solids and fluids throughout the system. Fact or fiction? Well, this is fiction. Doesn't this sound like organs that are doing the movement and transformation of solids and fluids? It's not the peritoneal lining. So this inner membranous lining of the abdominal and pelvic cavities is going to cover and support the organs and also serve as a conduit for vessels and nerves. But it's the organs themselves that will be doing that transformation or, or, or digestion of food. Here we see the peritoneal cavity outlined in red, and we can see that cavity filled in with yellow here. And that's what we're talking about, that membranous lining all around there. So let's look at another myth. The triple heater is a yang organ paired with the pericardium as its yin counterpart. So here we're dealing with those metaphors and those abstract terms of yin and yang. 
So I'd say that that's fiction, because yin and yang constitute merely abstract metaphors pertaining to relationships between entities. What is true, though, is that the thoracic portion of the triple heater, that pleural cavity, does surround the pericardium. And so in an abstract term, if we're just talking about relationships, yes, the triple heater, the part of it that's the pleura, is around that, that contents of the mediastinum, which is the pericardium. So we see here a cross-section through the thoracic cavity. And in yellow, I've highlighted the pericardium. But that is contiguous with the pleura as it's surrounding those lungs. Again, you're looking at this in cross-section. So it's not that they're two different things, but yes, the pericardium is yin in terms of being within what is more yang or surrounding it. So yes, the relationships take hold, but, but that's all there is, is more of an anatomical perspective. But neither the pleura nor the pericardium are usually considered organs in biological medicine. And then finally, there's this claim that the triple heater governs reproduction and provides energy for hormones. Well, we've already debunked that energy myth. But how does the triple heater relate to reproduction? It really doesn't. Historically, some people will relate bladder 22 as the back shoe point for the triple heater with reproduction. The only thing that we can really glean from that, though, might be that bladder 22 from a spinal segmental relationships could relate to the adrenal glands. And then it's the adrenal glands that produce the androgens, which are hormonal precursors involved in reproduction. So in summary, Chinese medicine, remember, arose from a pre-scientific interpretation of physiology. What we can do now by knowing that it's heavily laden with metaphors and also by knowing the actual anatomy and physiology from modern science, we can improve and update our practice of acupuncture by replacing misinformation with scientific facts as they become available. And that is myth-busting the triple heater.